Okay, Tim wrote me a question. I need very specific questions if you want me to ask. Very specific. One sentence. Tell me what travel has taught you about avoiding the materialistic rat race in America. Um, it's taught me that there's a rat race everywhere. I'm on the main highway uh, in Caratogo, West Africa, and there's a, always a race. Even these guys are running for a race. This is chaos here, and now I'm going to walk away from it. Everybody wants the bigger car, the bigger house, the bigger motorcycle, the better looking girl, the thing. It, the rat race is sort of everywhere on the planet. What was yours? Okay, probably the most intelligent answer I've ever got was when I was in an alcohol treatment center about 30 years ago. 27 years ago I quit drinking. and. I made a comment to the psychologist that said, everybody does everything for money. And he says, no, everybody does everything for intimacy. Okay, why are we in the rat race first? The reason why we're in the rat race is we think that if we buy the bigger car, we have the bigger cell phone, the bigger iPhone, the bigger this, that somehow people are going to love us and going to be intimate with us. And really, intimacy is time and it's free. All you got to do is talk to people and give them time. Okay. So how do I avoid the American rat race? Okay, let's talk about poker. Poker teaches me about the thing called a tell. A tell is a signal that somebody does, like they, every time they have a good hand, they go, they, they, do a, they, do, they smile or they touch their face or they do something that tells the other players that uh, I'm walking away from the rat race here. Hi, <laughs> I hear something coming. Okay, I'm going to try to walk away from this. I'll walk through this skull. This is a secret, first of all, avoiding the rat race. You walk away from it. You know where it's at, then you walk away from it. But, basically, you could just uh, go away from the sound and you'd be away from the rat race. But there's competition. And how to stay out of the competition. Uh, how to avoid the American materialistic world. Avoiding the materialistic rat race in America. Okay, back to the poker. When people play poker, they do things that signal the other people what their hand is. So they basically go. So I want to look at the tells. It's called a tell. Look it up in uh, under tell poker and Wikipedia and read about it. But a tell is a small signal that gives you a thing that somebody's involved in the rat race. And so when an American walks up to me, they start out their sentence with, I bought this. Hmm. You basically got to just be polite and walk away. Uh, hey, that's, that's Chinese. Hee haw. They keep calling me, saying hello in Chinese to me here. They, they want, you know, basically they'll say things like, what you need to do. <laughs> Come on, I don't need to do anything. Uh, I ought to, like, you should, all these things about <laughs> entering into the race, right? Basically say, let's go do something is what you want to hear. You want to hear that <laughs> from people. But the people that just tell you about, they, they come look at what I bought, <laughs> okay? They, they'll tell you, I'm busy. Now when a person, this is a classic, and this is just epidemic in America, they say, uh, can you call me later? I don't call them later. If they're too busy to give me two minutes. They're, they're not my friend. Okay, but you know, you basically just, that's a tell. I'm too busy. Oh yeah, you're too busy. I'll, I'll forget about calling you ever. Um, they say, I'll call you later. Um, they're not going to call you later. And even if they do call you later, they do. All, you, all you're really calling them for is to arrange a time to share time together. If it's important what you're doing, then if your friends want to know what you're going to do before they agree to do it, that's not a friend. A friend just don't care what, what you're going to do. You're going to be sharing time together. 
So avoiding the rat race in America is stink, but truly uh, the people the people believe that if they get a better job, a better house, better life, their their life's going to be better. But really, the more things you own, the more things you have to watch. Now, how did travel teach me that? Travel taught me this because I'm sitting in the middle of Africa, and I get some American walks up and tells me about his oh. iPhone he purchased. Oh. And you're going, how stupid can you be? Is all your priorities about an iPhone and we're in the middle of Africa? And this is it, you know, but you, you start to, the globalization, you're, you're, you're sitting in, in Europe and everybody's talking on their cell phone to America and you're going, I remember sitting in a hostel in uh, Amsterdam and this girl's calling her mother at home uh, all the time and you're going, why don't you just go home? Um, it's about the absurdity that you see, the absurdity of life that they're constantly looking somewhere else and they're not accepting today. But it's real easy to avoid. As, as a person travels, what you do is you start realizing what truly is entertaining to you. I like, I like movies, I like to read books, and I like to look at businesses along the way and things like that. And I learn to appreciate the simple things in life that I see. I don't... I don't make a plan to go see stuff. I just let life happen. Um, if I have to make a plan, that's part of a race. If I'm just walking around, wandering around, I'm not involved in anybody's race except my own. Warren Buffett said that you have to have your own... He said, well, you, you basically are competing with yourself to understand something. So I have my own ticker of what I want to do for me. I really don't. People, I got a really ding-a-ling. I said, what's my preoccupation with Africa? Well, I'm much more interested in Europe. What's that got to do with me? I don't care if he's interested in Europe. I'm interested in me. I do travel for me. He, he really is trying, what he's really saying to me is that, He's not interested in Africa and he wants me to go to Europe. Well, so he can hear my opinion about Europe. I don't give a crap what he thinks and he's just being anal and it's just a thing. But people tell you what they want you to be. And it really is not important. You've you got to figure out what you want to be. Hey, life is simple. Bonjour. Um, this boy over here is trying to be the best soccer person on the planet. He's doing it alone. And at the end of the day, if you can learn to do things alone, you can't. When I was, I was in uh, jail for 20 days, when I was about 21 for a drunken driving, and uh, they gave me a trustee's job. And I was like, they were doing me a favor, they thought. Um, what, what, you, what the trustees get to do is they get to work all day. And if you get into jail, you sit there and go, punishment is solitary confinement. And a reward is I get to work all day as a trustee. Because basically, the most torturous thing a human can do is be alone. And that's what travel has taught me, is how to be alone and love myself. And do, be self-entertaining. And once you're self-entertaining, you don't need to get in the rat race. But most of the people, they get in the rat race because they really hate themselves because they're such a shit. Every time you do something corrupt, cheat a person, lie a little, which most people make a lie every three seconds to try to, to get love, and because they, they sabotage it, then... They don't want to be alone with themselves because they really hate themselves. So they go to the chaos. Uh, urbanization is rampant on the planet, which means that here in Africa, everybody's moving. I'm in Togo, Africa. Everybody here moves to the big city to for chaos. They want to avoid thinking. They want to have some constant dr noise in their brain that that did this guy. 
they want they want to be I'm in a school grounds so I'm going to turn around they want to be busy they want to keep something going so how do I avoid it first of all anything is I have to learn to love myself so that I don't need entertainment by chaos and everything that passes me is entertainment while most people are taught in America that we have to have something special, something new. Something it's like somehow I'm going to have see the greatest photo on thing. It's just how we pass the time. Nothing you do is that important. And travel. At the end of the, let me finish this on on money. <laughs> if you take a suitcase or luggage and you live out of it for two years, your addiction to buying things will end because after two years you'll realize the futility of ownership and you'll be rich in experiences and because you're rich in experiences and your self-esteem is so good you'll never need the car the house the thing to prove to somebody that you're okay basically we were I was talking with Wade Shepard the other day and people buy all these things because they their low self-esteem. I always I said, hey, Obama, be president of the United States. How's low self-esteem? To prove that you're okay, you have to become president of the United States. <clears throat> People go get big jobs to prove that they're okay because of self-esteem problems. At the end of the day, once you got enough money to live, quit working. <laughs> I don't know how many people just keep plowing away like it's some kind of addiction. It's just mass dysfunctional behavior. So if you see a guy with a huge cell phone playing on it, avoid him. If you see a person talking about how busy they are, avoid them. If you see somebody that says, I'll call you back later because I'm so busy, avoid them. If you see somebody that you look at it and they walk away like oh, they're directing because they have... This, this person's in a rat race. You don't need them. What you need is the person that you're just looking at and they're like, hey, they got all the time in the world. If you see somebody with a really big car, one wants to show you, avoid them. If they see somebody says, come look at my house, avoid them. If some, but who are you going to left over is the people that are wanting to talk about, hey, what are you up to today and, and want to share the experience. If somebody wants to share their experience with you that's not so good so there's all these signals make a list of them like I'm busy oh, just get rid of those people anybody that tells you they're busy and they start out the sentence with that just jete throw them in the pool well <laughs> that's French uh, jete I like the word because it's like throw it throw this person away anybody that tells you that um, if if they're going to tell you that, then they're going to they're, they need to instantly say, we can block off a plant time two hours from now, and I'll call you, and they do it. If they don't do it, then they're really just a waste of energy. But once you get rid of all these people, what is left? Like it's good. Don't look for the most intelligent people. Look for the people that really want to be your friends. And the people that really want to be friends are not competitive with you. Um, of course, you know, there's a balance here. Look at these goats. Can you just sit and look at a goat and have fun? Or do you have to look at the biggest iPhone on what you can buy? Love yourself. That's it. <laughs> but loving yourself is being the master of something. To be an expert at something and then your self-esteem is good because you know that nobody can take that from you. Okay, if you have a question for me, send it to me by email. It has to be one sentence. It's got to be something I can make a title of, right, for the video. Uh, just very, very specific questions, just general questions are just a waste of energy. I can only ask it and email it to hobo on the road at yahoo.com. Hobo on the road at yahoo.com. And if I ignore you, you realize your uh, your question was 
too self-serving, has an agenda, you're greedy, something like that. If I do it, you're just trying to help you and the world. If you're just looking out to somehow make me love you, I, most people write me because they want me to think, give approval to what they're doing. Just have a personal question and talk to me honestly. I can smell an agenda a mile away. This is again one of the ways to avoid. What is the agenda? If the, you, you can almost see it on their face. You see the people on Facebook, it's quite obvious their agenda is to make money. And when I get on Facebook, damn right, I'm there to make money. But I'm also there just to fuzzy around, to be, be, be human. And, and the humanistic thing is what we want and the agenda is what we don't want. Look for the to poker tell, the, the telltale sign of thing. You can make, if you really have problems being part of the rat race, just make a list of it. And then drill yourself and identify these things until you learn it. Self-teaching is the one in 400 people, 500 people. Most people that are in the rat race want to be in the rat race. If, <laughs> if you really went out of the rat race in America, it's so freaking easy. Just leave. Move to a quiet place and then learn to love it. It's going to take you two years to get away from the addiction to chaos, though. And that's what travel taught me. I, I spent two years out of the chaos in, in, a, in my own world, not, not the defined by America world. And Americans are anal. They think America is special. It's just another country. Tonight, let's flip a coin.